Okay, so welcome. So today we're going to start talking about um, centers of mass, okay? And of course, just like most things, we want to start with something that's easy to understand, which is going to be in a one-dimensional um, example, right? So in physics, um, we want to find what's called the center of mass, and of course, most of the time when we talk about center of mass, we're talking about the balancing point of an object. So for example, when you see basketball players, right, they're, they're trying to balance the basketball on their finger, okay? Or if you see people, performers, entertainers that are spinning these plates on these sticks, right? And the plates are spinning. And so what they're doing is they're basically balancing it on the, the balancing point, the center of mass of the plates or the basketball. Now, incidentally, the spinning action is actually important because the spinning action of the ball or the plate actually makes it easier to balance the plate because then the point of balance uh, moves. And so it actually makes, uh, you don't have to actually have the stick or the finger perfectly balanced to uh, right on the point. Okay, but anyway, I digress. So how do we find the balancing point? Well, let's use a very simple example using a fulcrum and a very thin bar. Okay, a seesaw, right, comes to mind. So again, you think of kids on a, on a teeter-totter, or what we call a teeter-totter, or a seesaw. And so what you do is you try to have the kids, kids who are different weights, and you're trying to find the point where they will be balanced, right? So you, what, what happens? You have a heavier kid over here, lighter kid over here, and so it, it's gonna tilt in favor of the heavier kid. So what happens? Well, the heavier kid moves in, right? And all of a sudden, when you get to that distance, right, it'll balance. Okay, so for example, we'll talk about masses. Okay, so let's call this mass one. We'll call this mass two. Right, and so right here, if you look at the distance here, so we'll call this distance one. Oops. We'll call that distance two. And so what we find is, to, as far as the balancing point, we know that if we take the product of these two numbers and the product of these two numbers, that those will be equal, okay? So that's what happens at the balancing point. So this balancing point happens when M1 times D1 is equal to uh, M2 times D2. Okay, and so we know this is true if and only if. So, so if this is true, then we know that we have a balancing point. If we have a balancing point, then this must be true. But now, in this example, we're moving the masses, right, the kids, back and forth to try to find that balancing point. But what we're really interested in is not moving the masses around, because in most of the things that we're going to be dealing with, the masses are fixed, right? Not, we can't move them around. What we're interested in is we're interested in finding the balancing point, which means we're interested in moving the fulcrum. Okay, so let's, let's do this a little bit differently. Let's set it up um, like this. And let's say we have x1 and x2. And let's let those be point masses, right? We'll call these point masses on a very thin bar. 
And let's say we've got the balancing point x bar. And we're trying to find the balancing point of these point masses. And so let's say we've got this has a mass of m1, this has an, a mass of m2, and so we want to find what x bar needs to be, right? So let's do this. We know that the distance, so we're going to take the distance, right? We're going to, again, we're taking m1, d1, and we want m1, d1 to be equal to m2, d2. That's what we need. So now how do we represent this distance 1? Well, we're going to take the displacement from this value, x1, to this value. So this distance here. And what is that equal to? Well, that's going to equal to the, the absolute value of x1 minus x bar, right? So let's write it this way, m1 times the absolute value of x1 minus x bar is equal to m2 times, now this distance here, right, we'll call that d2, but this we're going to call it the absolute value of x bar 1 minus x2. Okay, so now, so that's where we're at now. Okay, so let's see if we can drop the absolute value sign. So since, since we're on a, um, a bar, right, we're talking about masses, and this is a number line, right? Let's assume this is a number line. <coughs> um, we're going to be interested in the distances, okay? So if that's the balancing point, right? So again, in a, in a two-dimensional or a one-dimensional um, aspect here, so we've got this balancing point, right? And these are point masses, right? So we've got this mass over here, we've got this mass over here, we're trying to find the balancing point. So in this case here, we're gonna, to drop the absolute value signs, we're going to say, okay, well, this value here, and again, we're talking about this is greater than this, and this is greater than this. So I'm going to drop the absolute value signs by um, just rearranging this as necessary. So we know this is bigger than this. So to drop the absolute value signs to make this positive, I'm going to write this as m1 times x bar minus x1. And then here I'm going to leave this, this is fine the way it is, so I can actually, since I'm subtracting it this way, I can, um, or no, no, no. No, no, I'm going to switch this one too, so I want x bar, I want x2 minus x bar, that's what I want. So I'm going to write m2 times, because x2 is bigger than x bar. Okay, so that's what we get. Okay, so far so good? Okay, not a big stretch. Okay, now, now we're just going to simplify this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this because, again, I want to solve for x bar, right? I'm looking for where the fulcrum needs to be, so that's, that's x bar. So all I'm going to do now is just use algebra and solve for x bar and see what I get. So I'm going to use the distributive property. So this is going to equal m1 x bar minus m1 x1 equals m2 x2 minus m2 x bar. So now I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to group the x bars together and I'm going to move everything else over to the right. So here I'm going to add to both sides, and I'm going to add this, m1 
X1 on both sides. Oops. Okay, so now this goes away, right? If I add down, and this cancels. So what do I end up with? Well, over here, let me write it down. Let me write it here. Um, let me write it down. So what I end up with is M1 X bar plus M2 X bar. Well, I need more room. I should start over here. Um, well, let me just write it over here. So this is M1 X bar plus M2 times X bar equals, what are we gonna get over here? I'm gonna get M1 X1 plus M2 X2. And now I'm gonna factor out the X bar, right? That's what I'm solving for. So I'm gonna factor out the X bar and I get M1 plus M2 is equal to M1 X1 plus M2 X2, and now I'm just gonna divide both sides by the sum of the, the masses, right? The total mass. <laughs> and so, guess what? I get X bar equal to M1 X1 plus M2 X2 over M1 plus M2. Okay, now, <clears throat> That's the formula for finding X bar, the fulcrum, where the balancing point is. So here's, so a couple of things. Let's talk about the numerator. The numerator is called the first moment with respect to the origin. Okay, now, if the context is clear, right, as far as the problem goes, then we, do, we drop the first. And we really just refer this to as the moment. Um, okay, so this sum refers to the moment. Okay, but again, technically, what we do is we call it the first, um, the first moment of the system with respect to the origin. Okay, or what we really refer to is just the moment of the system. Now the bottom obviously is the total mass of the system, okay? And so the balancing point is taking the ratio of the moment divided by the total mass of the system, okay? And so the center of mass of the system is the point at which the total mass of the system could be concentrated without changing the moment, without changing this, without changing the moment. Okay? So now, in this example, we just did it with two points, right? Okay, but we could do it with three, right? We could do, we could put X3 here, or X4, we could put another point, X4 or x5, or all the way up to x of n. So we could do this with n point, um, uh, what do you call, point masses, okay? So how would that look? Well, it's gonna look very similar. So if you, if you we derive this with respect to two, what would it look like if we had n point masses? Well, the answer to the question would be this. So this is what we get. So if we say four point masses, x of one through x of n, then we would say x bar is defined as follows. The numerator would just be the sum of all of the products of m sub i. So for i equals 1 to n, it would be m sub i x sub i. So there's some, right? 
And then the denominator is just going to be the sum of all the masses, the total mass, which is going to be the summation of i equals 1 to n of m sub i. And so that's the general formula if we want to have n point masses. Okay, and again, that's if we're looking at a one-dimensional um, example where all these point masses are on a number line like a very thin uh, rod, right? Like a number line, okay? So this would be the result, okay? Okay, that's it. So next time I'm going to give you a theorem that's gonna basically put all this together nicely into one result. Okay, see you next time.